Good morning and welcome back to Your Financial Independence, where we're always trying to grow your financial independence. So I got a new stock that I'm buying that I added to my portfolio. But first, before we get into that, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. Let's help grow this small channel a little bit. So first, I'm going to reveal this stock, what I'm actually buying, uh, the opportunities that this stock can, you know, the revenue they can potentially produce in the next uh, five, six, seven years long term, just like all my other stocks. And then I'm going to get down to some of the fundamentals that I wrote down and the reasons why I'm buying the stock, the valuation that I'm buying the stock. And then I'm going to actually show you what I ha actually have in my portfolio. So if you care about those uh, general terms, then you can skip along the video. I don't mind. Just make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. Last little plug. Today, we're going to get in what am I actually buying? What have I already bought? So the stock, it was STIC. Now it's BarkBox. And you know that I do own Chewy stock. And I want this as more because I, I see this space as growing exponentially in the next coming years. The pet industry, uh, treating our pets better, you know, more luxury items, stuff like that, getting subscription services shipped to our house. So BarkBox, let's get into what the company is, what their growth is, you know, all those good figures. So the business of making dogs happy is a big opportunity. According to the Euromonitor International, the size of the global pet market surpassed $120 billion in 2019. The pet industry is most dominated by the legacy market approach. And while industries like transportation, health, and entertainment have been transformed by online consumer concentric companies, uh, Peloton, Netflix to give examples, the pet market is in early stages of this innovation. So in a way, I know they're totally not related, but think about uh, everybody. I don't even have direct TV or dish or anything like that, like a uh, subscription uh, monthly fee and you can watch TV shows on television. I get Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime. That's where I watch everything on and YouTube. So think of this being in the early stages, like they just said, in the pet industry. Think about when Netflix first came on. How many, the first year Netflix was a subscription-based uh, service. How many people, was it that popular? How many people you think actually watched Netflix? So I do believe that in the future, uh, a lot of people ain't going to be buying dog food at those stores. Uh, I already don't do that. A lot of people that I work with already use Chewy. Uh, and this is another, uh, they have a food service that's more as a um, medicated, uh, if your dog needs special, you know, food blends or whatever, if they have digestive issues. But I do believe, because at the same time, it's just as cheap ordering online from Chewy, getting it sent to your house. You don't have to worry about forgetting dog food. You don't have to worry about toting around that 60-pound, 30-pound bag, whatever you buy around the store. It gets delivered to your house for the exact same cost. On, like, I have a nine-week schedule, so every nine weeks it gets delivered to my house. Every nine weeks, don't have to worry about forgetting it. Costs just as much, so why wouldn't you use it? That's kind of like the theme that I'm going after. So BarkBox is a vertically integrated, I love companies that are vertically integrated. They create all their products. So all products are designed, developed, and branded by BarkBox. This gets better gross uh, margins, which they're sitting at 60%. And then you can see here on 2012, they started out on BarkBox and Bark Shop. And then they since went to Urban Outfitters. They've even got affiliations with Target, Amazon, uh, Costco, uh, TJ Maxx. Like they're going everywhere. So a lot of these companies are already selling products that they have. And so 2022, they're expecting about a little over $500 million in revenue. And the global market, as we just stated, is $120 billion. So say they only get 5% of that. You know, on the high end, I could expect that. And that's why this is a small position. On the high end, that's about $6 billion of revenue per year, where they're sitting at about a little over $500 million now. 
So there's huge, 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 there's a lot of growth. And this is 120 billion as of now, being that uh, this isn't as much of a popular thing, you know, ordering uh, dog products online, getting them shipped to your house. So this market is going to grow. And that's the global market, by the way. Uh, U.S. market is about $50 billion. So for revenue in 2021, it's about $376 million. That's a 68.8% year-over-year growth. So this is a high-growth company. It's a little bit more risky. That's why it's a smaller position. But this is a, this company has leaps and bounds that it can grow in the future. For a net loss is about $31 million. And now something that I think is the bread and butter of this company long term, how much revenue they're going to bring in, the amount of growth is the subscription based. So we're looking at about 11, a little over 11 and a half million subscriptions. And this is a year over year growth of over 50%. So active subscriptions is 1.8 million, which is a 51% increase. New subscriptions is 1.2 million. So that's within this year. And that's a 91% increase. And especially up in Phoenix, I live in Arizona, but in Phoenix, BarkBox is a lot more popular being that it's a bigger city. So you can kind of expect that. And then the average order value has also went up. So the average order you're looking at a little, basically $29 per box, uh, which is free shipping. It has all that good stuff, which is a 7.2% increase year over year. And for 2023 revenue, from where we're at right now, 2023 revenue of $706 million, that's a 3x in revenue from where we are right now. So there's going to be a lot. And this company is not expected to be profitable within the next five years. So do understand that um, a company can always evolve quicker. And yeah, maybe it takes four years for them to be become profitable. Maybe it takes six years. We never really know that. But one good thing that I'm looking at is the revenue growth is increasing. One con to that, if I see subscription services starting to decline uh, over two, three quarters, then more than likely I'm going to start looking at selling the position because that's a, a, a negative trend that you don't want to see in a growth company, which will then turn to uh, net losses at a higher rate. So now I want to get into the four themes that they have at BarkBox. The normal one is the BarkBox subscription services. And once again, these are all uh, items that BarkBox th themselves create, label, uh, advertise, all that good stuff. And it gets shipped to your house. You have treats, uh, toys, all kinds of stuff that gets shipped to your house every single month if you have the subscription-based service. And that starts at about $23 a box and it's valued up to $40. So consumers are getting a good deal. Uh, Bart box, they're getting free advertisement. People are going to their neighbors or neighbors are walking by apartment buildings and seeing like Bart box. And then they look it up on their phone and like, oh, maybe I want to do that. So your first box ships immediately. And then every single month. So every 28 days, you get another box. And then if you do like the product, then you can go to the super chewer, which is basically the same box, but there's double the dog stuff every single month, which saves you about $45. And then you have Bark Bright, which is more uh, dental orientated, you know, like dental health for dogs, which is very important as dogs age. And then you have Bark Eats, which starts at about a dollar a day. So if you're, say your dog's having a lot of diarrhea or if they're going through health problems at uh, their later stages of life, they actually offer a service where they actually formulate a product specific to your dog, which to my knowledge, uh, no other subscription-based service does that. And BarkBox has the best subscription service. I love Chewy, but BarkBox does have, as far as subscription-based model, they have the best service, and that's why they're seeing revenue growth like they are right now. So I'm trying to keep the video short. Hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight. As always, do your due diligence on these stocks before you invest money in them. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you what I'm doing with my money and where I'm starting my positions and what I'm looking into for the company. So today we have we have seen, uh, since I bought, bought in, we have seen a nice stock price increase. Uh, 
And it started out, I think it went to like $18 and 50 cent. And then now we're down where we were downtrending a lot to below $10. And now we're at about $11 and 10 cents, which I started buying my positions. I got an average cost of $10 and 20 cent. I now own 500 shares. And since I've bought in about an 8.8% increase, so $450 which is nothing to where I can see this company going long term. I think they're going to have a huge market cap if this model succeeds and if they continue to innovate throughout the future. So I do want to go over some of the stuff that I looked at and tell you all like what I bought the company for, the valuation that they have. So the merger gave $427 million in cash to BartBox after they completed their merger with STIC. Accounts payable that they have is $50.5 million. So this is how much revenue they can expect uh, off of goods already sold. Current liabilities um, of $122 million. I kind of fudged the number right there. I think it's $122 million though. Total liabilities of $250 million. Gross margins, as I said before, of 60%. They have a $1.6 billion market cap as of today, and that's $365 million of revenue that they're already receiving. So in 2023, they're already expecting over $700 million of revenue. So we have a lot of growth headed towards the future as long as they continue to innovate, as long as they get subscription growth and people are actually ordering these boxes which I'm gonna keep close ties to. And as soon as I think about selling a position or some bad news comes out, or I see anything bad with the company, obviously I will let y'all know. So the price to sales right now is 4.38. So you're basically paying $4.38 to every dollar of revenue that they're actually getting in, which is kind of expensive, but you gotta realize, I mean, what other company out there is growing, or there isn't a whole lot of companies out there that are growing their revenues, you know, uh, a CAGR rate that I got from 2023 to now of 47%. That's it's kind of insane. So that's kind of the valuation that I paid for the stock. Um, those are some, they have a, not the best balance sheet, but they have a very healthy balance sheet. They're not uh, gonna be going, they're not looking at going bankruptcy or anything like that. They have plenty of cash on hand for all the liabilities and all the current liabilities that they have coming up in the next year. So I hope this gave a good uh, overview of BarkBox stock. Make sure you always do your own due diligence. Don't listen to any YouTuber, me or any other popular YouTuber. Make sure you always do your due diligence and make sure you subscribe. With this, I hope to catch y'all back on the next video.